Hey everyone, open invitation here for my first virtual science and tech workshop where you will extract DNA from a, your favorite organism, uh, be it a plant, some meat, or your annoying kid brother. It only hurts him a little bit. Okay, okay, I'm only joking about that. It actually hurts a lot. Okay, seriously though, I'll be hosting a variety of science and tech workshops from the Tech Valley Science Center here in Eastern Ontario as in-person workshops and I normally charge typically about a hundred bucks a head plus materials. I was also going to experiment with holding virtual workshops before COVID came along and it made everybody absolutely sick and tired of virtual classes. However, I'm going to run an experimental workshop and you are invited. Because it's experimental and the first one I'm giving, it will be free. You just have to supply the materials. Now, while I'm specifically targeting homeschoolers with children eight years old and up, everyone is welcome to join in. I'll host it Wednesday, March 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so the people out on the West Coast can join in on the party, and I'll be simulcasting on the Tech Valley Science Center YouTube channel, as well as on Facebook. For the workshop, you will need the following materials. It's BYOB, bring your own biomatter from which you will extract DNA. This could be wheat germ, some plant or leaves, uh, fruit like a banana or strawberries, uh, some meat, raw or cooked, or yourself. I would recommend wheat germ as you will get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of just how much DNA you will get out of the process. And it will be the second easiest biomatter to process. Fruit is easier to process, but will produce less DNA than wheat germ. You can also use any plant or leaf, but leaves contain notoriously low amounts of DNA. And the more biomatter you put in, the more DNA you'll get out. So if you use leaves, just use lots of them. Meat is also more difficult to process and extract visible amounts of DNA. Same goes for your own DNA. If you wish to extract some of your own DNA, uh, we'll do that by getting some of your cheek cells. But the amount of DNA that you get will be quite small and can be difficult to see. Depending on what biomatter you wish to use, you will need the following materials and equipment. A strainer or cheesecloth or a relatively porous cloth like J cloth or even a coffee filter. Some liquid dish soap. Some plain old table salt. A plain old meat tenderizer like you use for cooking or some fresh chilled pineapple juice or fresh chilled papaya juice. You know how when you eat pineapple, it makes your mouth you know, feel raw? Yeah, that's because pineapple juice contains a digestive enzyme and it is literally digesting the cells in your mouth. The meat tenderizer and the papaya juice do the same thing. They all contain digestive enzymes we're going to use to help digest the biomatter that you bring. You will need a blender or mortar and pestle, or if you cannot get either of these, then simply bring a small plastic bag and use fruit for your biomatter. We'll simply mash up the fruit in the plastic bag along with your buffer. If you're bringing some kind of seed or perhaps wheat berries as your BYOB, these have a tough outer shell, so you will absolutely need a blender or a coffee grinder or a mortar and pestle and some really good elbow grease. Uh, same goes for meat because you have to you know, break open the cell walls to get to the DNA. Vegetables can be hard to process as well because they tend to be tougher and obviously wood is very tough. You'll need some glassware or plasticware that's transparent. Preferably a test tube for the final steps, but it can be a small glass, shot glass, tumbler, or even these cheap, clear plastic mini cups I got from the dollar store. Lastly, you will need some isopropyl alcohol of at least 75% purity, the higher the better, or the best thing you could possibly get is pure ethanol. I'll be using this lock de-icer which, if you look, is either pure ethanol or an ethanol isopropyl alcohol mix. So let's do some prep. You will need to make what we call a buffer used in the lab. 
You have two options here depending on your BYOB, but either option will require making the base buffer first so you can stick it in the fridge and have it as chilled as possible before we perform our lab. Take about 100 milliliters or about a third of a cup of water, preferably distilled water, so you know it doesn't have any chemicals in it from the water treatment processes, but it's not an absolute necessity. Mix in about a half a teaspoon of salt. The amounts aren't critical, you're just trying to make a rich salt water brine. Mix this up real good. Mark the container with buffer. and chill it in the fridge so it's as close to freezing temperatures as possible. And you'll pull it out just before you use it in the lab. If you wish to sample your own DNA, you'll collect some of your own cells using the buffer as a mouthwash because you want the, uh, the pineapple or papaya juice to be as fresh as possible. Chill the pineapple or papaya and juice it just before the lab so it's cold and the juice is fresh. Just before you use the buffer, mix in about 50 milliliters of the pineapple juice with the buffer. That's about half the volume of water you mixed up. This will help with the taste just a little bit, though at the end of the day, it's still a pretty disgusting tasting mix of salted pineapple juice. <laughs> oh, and don't eat or drink anything but water at least one hour before the lab. It will help if you brush your teeth and floss an hour or two before the lab to you know, remove as much food particles and bacteria from your mouth as possible. If you are opting to use meat tenderizer instead of pineapple or papaya juice, I would say do not mix meat tenderizer in your mouthwash. Just swish the salt water around in your mouth. If you are going to use the meat tenderizer, it's best to dissolve, uh, dissolve in a pinch of the meat tenderizer with some more of your distilled water to make a separate mixture you'll use later in the lab. Again, the amounts are not critical. Uh, you just want a small amount of water with a lot of dissolved meat tenderizer in it. So maybe like 15 milliliters of water with at least a pinch of meat tenderizer maybe even going up as, to as much as a quarter teaspoon of the meat tenderizer. It just needs to be dissolved in the water. Mark that mixture as digester and chill it in the fridge the day before the lab as well. Also, take your alcohol or ethanol and put it in the freezer at least a day before the lab. You want that alcohol as cold as possible. Now, don't worry, it won't freeze as the freezing point is somewhere between minus 50 and minus 80 degrees Celsius. And if your freezer gets to those temperatures, let me know because I want to get a freezer just like yours. Lastly, just make sure your glassware is clean. If you do those things, then show up to the live stream and you'll be ready to rumble. We'll walk through the steps in the DNA extraction process together during the live stream workshop. And... Depending on how it goes, I may also try and extract some DNA from this fossil date, which isn't a fossil at all. Uh, those of you who have followed me will have seen when myself and two other guys last summer actually ate some of these dates, which come from a brown coal seam in Germany. As Vance Nelson pointed out with lab work in his beautiful coffee table book, Flood Fossils, these supposed fossils are still soft, still have their fruity smell preserved, and as we demonstrated in front of everybody last summer, are still quite sweet and edible. So I hope you'll join me and come prepared for the first step in your study of genetics.